This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey hey, Marcus House with you here, and even though we've had the flight of the prototype Starship Serial No. 5 just over a week ago, the progress at Boca Chica, Texas has not stopped. We'll talk about both Serial No. 6, which has since rolled to the launch pad, and the vision for Serial No. 8, which is coming together very quickly. We have some interesting information on the recently awarded launch service contracts for SpaceX and United Launch Alliance. Very exciting to see SpaceX being involved in future launch capability for the US military there. Now that the dust has settled with Crew Dragon's Demo 2 with Doug and Bob's mission, we can now focus on the amazing Crew 1 and Crew 2 missions. Crew 1 of course coming up faster than you may think, with a possibility they're launching at the end of October. So yes, we start today in the aftermath of the amazing flight of the first full-scale Starship prototype, Serial No. 5, this stunning drone picture of the 150 meter hop there from Elon Musk. Quite a nice opening shot there, I think, as we begin to explore the weekly goings-on around the production facility since the last episode. After all of the post-hop inspections, including SN5 being hoisted up onto these I-beams and having the legs moved away, it was later on picked up and again placed onto the roll lift for transport transportation back to the construction site. That was then rolled back midweek as we see there with Lampadre capturing it beautifully as it moved slowly past the cameras. Other activity hasn't seemed to slow down either with what many believe is a super heavy launch pad foundation having a lot more work done on it. Some great shots here by RGV aerial photography showing just how much this has evolved in just a few short weeks. Many are also thinking that this could actually be a foundation for a massive water tower. In 2014 the F FAA did approve SpaceX's plan to build a 250 foot high, 250,000 gallon water tower at the Boca Chica site, so this could also be true. I can't seem to find anything super concrete about that one way or another. Let me know what your thoughts are. Now these amazing shots are super essential, so thank you to all the support you are showing to RGV there for these flights. It's made a huge difference over the last few months of coverage. The construction site, of course, has had a load of activity going on, and we should really start with the thrust skirt section here, showing this label on it saying SN 7.1 and leg skirt. There has also been a fore dome as well as an aft dome with the thrust puck and plumbing also displaying a label there saying SN 7.1. This is certainly looking like we have that second test tank being finalized for testing very soon. It is speculated to be a test tank similar to the previous tank, but looks to have some interesting new features. The last SN SN7 test tank had a simple rounded bottom bulkhead. From what we can see here with the new test tank, it'll have a very similar thrust puck structure and skirt similar to a full Starship prototype. That is all still yet to be 100% confirmed, but interesting to watch as development continues. It isn't clear exactly when they will be testing this smaller beast, but some rumors suggest that the recent relocation of the flare stack may have something to do with it. They are going to want to add a little more distance so that a test tank rupture, which is generally an intended outcome, outcome can't interfere with what is going on with testing on serial number six. And this test tank is no different, with Elon mentioning that it would indeed be the new alloy test tank to be taken to burst pressure. The ruptures experienced here aren't all that energetic, but there is still a fair amount of unpredictability with these tests, as we see here from this awesome shot from Lab Padre. The flare stack there, for those that don't know, have been used to vent and burn excess methane gases as Starship prototypes are fueled up for static fire tests, and of course, full demonstration flights. Now when they're loading the liquid methane, you naturally get some fairly substantial boil off, which increases pressure in the tank. The excess methane gases are allowed to escape out of that flare stack, which they've simply burned in the past to reduce the amount of it that ends up in the atmosphere. The idea now, I believe, is that SpaceX are now using this as a backup, as they are now in most cases recondensing that back into liquid form again. So the flare stack, it seems, is now more of a backup just in case there is excess from what can be condensed at any time. Big thanks to John Randolph here for capturing that footage of the SpaceX team moving the stack closer to the water tank area. More updates to come on his YouTube channel linked in the description. Yet another great reference there for you all to follow. We have some updates on the aerodynamic control surfaces as well. A pair of forward fins has been delivered recently as shown in last week's video, but we also have shots by RGV giving us a better view from above. These new fins seem to have a different design to those from Mark 1 and the 2019 renders from the Starship presentation displayed in Brendan's latest image here. Again, follow that dude, he's doing amazing work and it's so nice to have these diagrams back in action again. Just to support what we're saying here, Elon has confirmed that it would indeed be serial number 8 that 
that would have the body flaps and nose cone installed. Speaking of the body flaps, the dining area here that is built from the old versions is pretty much done. This all came together before we knew it and what a great way to add some character to this area. The staff can relax here in the shade and I suspect future presentations may be done here too. Speaking of which, we hope to be seeing another Starship presentation by Elon Musk again very soon. Always quite a highlight of the year for us watching so closely and this looks like a great spot for it. SpaceX is also getting serious about applying the thermal protection tiles as we see here with a much larger collection of them in the shape of SpaceX's logo. A lot of these tiles will need to be placed on the windward side of the Starship to protect it from the extreme temperatures of orbital re-entry. This is SpaceX's solution which creates a simple and efficient way to apply these tiles to avoid the same issues the Space Shuttle had. One advantage of SpaceX's tiles over that of the shuttles is that SpaceX is mechanically attaching these tiles through the use of a robot as seen here. Saying all that, SN5 had some of the same tiles attached to its hull that seemed to have either cracked or fell off after the 150 metre hop. Now obviously that is something that will need improvement well before they attempt an orbital flight test. Interestingly it sounds like the more recent attachments are using a slightly different mounting method. SpaceX simply need bigger sections of tiles to see how they hold up with cryogenic temperatures causing shrinkage, pressure expansion and body bending. The super heavy high bay continues to grow as well with that third level being built out in preparation for the next level to kick off. The massive blue crane here making it look effortless but I also suspect the massive size of that beast along with the complexity of operating it cause a number of frustrations and delays. It'll be nice for that job to be done just to free up a little space there on site. Before Starship serial number 6 was moved to the launch site it was still in the mid bay there and a great shot from Elon Musk as SN5 returned home and SN6 heads off to the launch site. Mary aka Boca Chica Gal and NASA spaceflight there capturing its arrival here as well as it being stacked up on top of the launch platform. Now something I didn't expect at all was this announcement by Elon Musk saying that indeed SN5 may fly again after it's been repaired. SN5's damaged legs can be seen here and they were then taken to the scrap heap however just recently a new set of legs were delivered to the landing pad. Could these be version 1.1 legs that Elon said are 60% longer? These may be fitted to SN5 to attempt another hop in the coming weeks. Of course they may also be for SN8. Hard to say at this point. So yes it's all happening and we may be seeing Starship serial number 6 flying sooner than you may think. Elon Musk here tweeting that it's likely that SN6 flies before SN5 and that SpaceX need to make flights simple and easy with many per day. Many flights per day sounds very optimistic now however I wouldn't be surprised if all of this becomes true in the near future. Could we be seeing repeated launch tests within days of each other by the end of the year? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always a huge thank you to everyone so beautifully documenting this ride. Mary and NASA Spaceflight of course thank you. RGV Aerial Photography from the Air. Lab Padre with the 24-7 live streams. Brendan creating these amazing diagrams. It all just blows my mind how much work you're all doing to present Starship development here to the entire world. Now if you want to know more about the recent 150 meter flight and what we can expect from upcoming missions I talk more in depth about that in this video. While you're here of course please do consider subscribing and taking a quick second to tap that like button. Your support has just been incredible. I hit 100,000 subscribers in January this year and my goal right now with almost 180,000 is to double that and hit 200,000 by the time I turn 40 in October. Seems optimistic I know but you guys just continue to blow my mind so who knows. Now on to other interesting news. Out of four proposals received by the Pentagon, two were recently awarded launch service contracts to secure launch capability for the US military. That will all start from 2022 through to 2027. United Launch Alliance will be receiving the larger share of the launch contracts at $337 million. Then there is SpaceX. They are going to be awarded contracts valued at $316 million. The types of activities expected to be undertaken cover a wide area, including mission launch processes, vehicle manufacture and conducting activities that will be specific for any mission at hand. And there are quite a list of missions planned, over 30 I believe, so this is a big deal for both SpaceX and ULA. The push by the Pentagon for US sourced launch capability and the purchasing of the launch services really comes from concerns of national security where past military satellite missions have heavily relied on the Russian RD-180 engines as propulsion. Now beyond 2022 the Pentagon apparently can no longer purchase the RD-180s saying that they will still have 12 or so of them left to use in the near future. But now they can move beyond this limitation given that they have the ability to choose from several 
American providers. The future plan is critical also because there will be a form of redundancy in the event that one launch provider is not operational for any reason. Of course, with providers such as SpaceX bidding for these contracts, there will naturally be cost reductions due to the competitive processes involved. Quite a strict bid selection criteria had to be met covering a range of factors such as having the ability to meet technical requirements, having the capability to work with small to medium business enterprise, and of course price. And although Blue Origin and Northrop Grumman were also bidding for a slice of the launch pie and were ultimately unsuccessful, it doesn't mean that they will miss out entirely. Blue Origin will produce BE-4 main engines for the Vulcan Centaur rocket belonging to United Launch Alliance. Northrop Grumman will be making solid rocket boosters for ULA as well. Now SpaceX made no submission to use Starship for any of these launch contracts, rather Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy with a larger fairing option will take the load of all of that. And actually a new mobile tower will also be required at Pad 39A in order to vertically integrate payloads as required. Now with the recent success of SpaceX's Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission with Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken, we now look forward to the Crew 1 flight roughly scheduled right now at the end of October. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but before that, this week's sponsor. Now you all know how this works. To spend the time I do to research, edit and create this content for you all, funding and support is super important. And today, this video is sponsored by Brilliant, who are massive supporters of my channel here. If you would like to learn something new, Brilliant is the perfect area to start. There's a website and a mobile app that will make all of this awesome content easily accessible and enjoyable. The material is all built on problem solving and active learning and I personally find it so much easier to learn concepts in a visual way and interacting with examples like this. Their course material is all laid out logically into manageable chunks so that you can work through it all in your own time. And better yet, there is no grades or tests. It's as simple as just picking an area of interest for yourself and then just jumping in. Mistake Mistakes are to be celebrated here. In fact, you often learn more from selecting the wrong answer and learning from the explanation material than if you are correct the very first time. If you're naturally curious and you want to build up those problem solving skills further, consider checking out Brilliant Premium. There's a bunch of newer content here that I find fascinating such as the neural networks material here. After diving into some more of this interactive content, it gave me a much better understanding of the types of problems that these kind of networks can solve. It's pretty interesting stuff. If you would like to help support me and would like to give this all a try, just go to brilliant.org slash Marcus House. The first 200 people will get 20% off for the first year of Brilliant Premium. You'll find that link in the description below. So yes, the upcoming Crew-1 mission is coming sooner than you may think. With all the attention of Doug and Bob's return, it's just natural to see the next Crew mission of Dragon as being quite a long way off. But that is not so true with it being roughly scheduled towards the end of October. We just happened to catch a glimpse of the crew at the media event for Bob and Doug's return, and it's just amazing to think that this is going to play out again soon. With not just two astronauts on board, the next mission we have four incredible individuals heading to the International Space Station. Shannon Walker has flown before in 2010 aboard Soyuz, having logged 163 days in space already. Victor Glover will undertake his maiden spaceflight and is an experienced US Navy commander. Michael Hopkins flew Soyuz in 2013. And then Soichi Noguchi flew on Shuttle Discovery's STS-114 in 2005 and also flew on Soyuz in 2009. These new crew missions are a huge deal for SpaceX and NASA, especially given that the United States has not had the capability of sending astronauts into space since the shuttle retired back in 2011. In 2014, SpaceX signed a $2.6 billion deal with NASA to fly six missions to the International Space Station. Crew-1, as its name implies, is the very first non-demo flight of these six missions, so it's incredibly exciting to see this launch capability return. Looking just a little further ahead now to sometime in the spring of 2021, Crew-2 will launch to the International Space Station. On board that mission will be Catherine MacArthur, who is the wife of Bob Penkin there from Crew Dragon demo too. What an amazing partnership that is. She previously flew on Shuttle Atlantis STS-125. Shane Kimbrough has flown before on Shuttle Endeavour STS-126 as well as on board the Soyuz in 2016. Thomas Pesquet is a one-time Soyuz crew member. And then we have Akahiko Hoshide, a name I've probably just totally butchered, who was a crew member on Shuttle Discovery STS-124 and also aboard Soyuz in 2012. Now expectations 
at this stage are that the Crew-2 astronauts will spend around six months in space along with three crewmates who will launch via a Russian Soyuz. With such a full space station crew, NASA will be able to vastly increase the amount of science that can be conducted at the time. That is exciting alone, but with commercial agencies such as SpaceX with Crew Dragon and in the future Boeing Starliner handling launches, NASA can focus on the incredible science along with developing the spacecraft to explore deep space and also conducting those groundbreaking missions to the surface of Mars, the Moon and other incredible locations in our solar system. Now finally, I just wanted to share some great snippets here from Cosmic Perspective, capturing some very artistic footage of Starlink's latest booster returning from its mission there on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You. The booster there just looking beautifully scorched after its fifth flight. Could this booster be the first ever to make a sixth landing and return? We'll find out soon. Now Mary, Liz and Ryan do a wonderful job bringing such footage to the space community and if you aren't following there, you are totally missing out. Check them out from the links in the description and on Twitter. Great Great work there. As they say, seeing people gaze and be captivated by a rocket booster returning from space never gets old, and I for one can totally agree with that point. Now just quickly, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons here. I simply could not do what I'm doing here without you. Your generous support has allowed me to increase the time I can spend on this content, and I just can't thank you all enough for that. Further help just allows me to do even more, and if you like what I do and would like to join our patrons here, head to patreon.com slash marcushouse. You can interact with me more directly via the include roles in Discord, you can check out some exclusive patron-only content, you can also have your name listed right here like all of these other incredible people. A massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here helping me research and run through the material for these videos. I'm always super humbled that these great people love this stuff enough to donate a little of their time to make these videos even better. Thanks team. In the tile in the bottom left today we have of course my video last week talking about the amazing Starship Serial number 5's 150m hop. In the top right is my latest video, in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from a channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.